Hello and good day everyone. My name is Ron and let us answer some separation processes problems. Question 1. Use the shortcut and chem step distillation column to simulate the following in DW Sim. The compounds are ethanol and water and the property package to be used is NRTL. The inlet stream has a mass flow of 100 km per hour, mole fraction of 0.5 in terms of ethanol, and mole fraction of 0 0.5 in terms of water with a pressure at 1 atmospheric units. And the other column properties that we need to know is that the reflux ratio is 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. The light key is ethanol, the heavy key is water, and the fraction of ethanol in the distillate is 0 0.99, while the fraction of ethanol in the bottoms is 0 0.01. So what we needed, but first, this is the given diagram to correspond to this given data earlier. And required is that A, we need to determine the actual number of stages in N minimum reflux ratio using the shortcut column. And B, what are the boiler and condenser duties of the column when using chem set? So to start, let us go to the WSIM and let us start first with an EC model using the built-in separation process. So we're going to use a shortcut column first before the campsite column. Before that, let us specify the needed variables. So according to the data here, we need to specify to simulate ethanol and water. So we write here ethanol and water. So those only those two. Click next. Then we use NRTL and we add them. Next. And then we use SI units. So, what units? So, we go to new units and we'll specify the mass flow as kilomoles per hour. So, the mass flow, I, since this is mass, not really mass flow, but molar flow. So, kilomoles per hour. So, molar flow, it must be kilomoles per hour. Mole fraction is 0 0.5. Pressure is 180M. And that's it in terms of units. So, we're going to set that as finish. Afterwards, we will now use this data for our shortcut column. So go to the columns tab and press here shortcut column. And it will be provided the necessary streams and data automatically due to the recent update of DW Sim. So we'll set we'll set here as feed. We'll rename this as feed. And we will rename this as distillate. And this one as bottoms. Okay, so let's specify the variables stated earlier. So for the inlet stream, it says here that the mass flow or molar flow rate is 100 kilomoles per hour. So we'll put here 100 kilomoles per hour. Then mole uh, pressure at 180 m. And since there's no temperature specified, we'll just put it here as the standard temperature, which is 25 degrees Celsius. And then for the compound amounts, it says here that they are equimolar or half-half, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, mole fraction, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, accept. And our feed is specified. Afterwards, the column properties. So we'll go here to the column properties itself. And we'll check, double check if the streams are connected with respective energy streams here. And we need to specify the like. So the like component is specified here as water. I, ethanol, sorry. For the heavy heavy key component is water. <coughs> so the light mole fraction, the light key, so ethanol mole fraction in the bottoms is specified here as 0 0.01. Here, heavy key mole fraction in the distillate. So this is the light key mole fraction in the distillate. And how do we find the heavy key mole fraction? Well, due to the system being binary, it's just simply subtracting this value by 1 to get the mole fraction of water. Since the water is a heavy key, the mole fraction of water in the distillate. So 1 minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01, hence it is 0 0.01. The reflux ratio is 1.5 times the minimum. So we'll just put here it for now and put the condenser type as total, condenser pressure as 1 and 1 as the basis. And we will press enter. And the solution is here. So, as you can notice, there's the number of stages is not a number, not a number. It's the, the reason being that the reflux ratio might not be a valid number. But, 
we already calculated, we already stated in the problem earlier that the reflux ratio must be 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. The minimum reflux ratio is a function of the feed, the feed details and the pressure and temperature. So with that in mind, the reflux ratio, in order to get the actual reflux ratio, is to multiply this value by 1.5 and press enter, and you will have this value. Then, as you can see, the stages number are already numerical in form and not and no more an NAN form, not a number, meaning that we have solved this column successfully. And to summarize, as you can see here, what we want here is the actual number of stages and the minimum reflux ratio in the shortcut column. So the actual number of stages is 23, 0.0956 or 24 stages to be, to be a good estimate. 24 actual number of stages and the minimum reflux ratio is 1.93202. So this is with regards to the PowerPoint, so the actual is 24 stages. The minimum stages, as we also took note the minimum stages as 14. The feed optimal feed stage is 12. The actual re reflux ratio is 2.89803. The minimum reflux ratio is 1.93202. The duty of the condenser is 2105. And the duty of the reboiler is 2438. For the second part of the requirement, we need to simulate it using the chemsep column. So, with that in mind, we need to go back to the data. I actually this is the same this is the same simulation file. I just did not change the the parameters in order for a smooth transition towards the next part. So, in order to do that, to simulate it using chemsep, we must all remember to take note again of the details and to, before we get the chemsep uh, column. We must first specify our streams. So compared to the shortcut column where everything is already set, even the streams, for the chem set, we must manually prepare the streams itself. So we'll put here and here. So one stream will serve as the feed, and we will rename this as the feed stream. And noting the parameters earlier, one pressure ATM, mass molar flow of 100. Yes, 100 kilometers per uh, kilomole, sorry, kilomoles per hour. Then equimolar mixture. All right. Then here is the distillate. We just need to rename it. We don't need to change its parameters since that is an output variable. And this one is we can name this as condenser duty. And this one as reboiler. Duty. All right. Since both material and energy streams are prepared, we just need to use go to keep open, keep open unit operation, drag and drop. It might take a while depending on how fast your computer is. Then click OK. Then here is the chemsep column. So it might be a bit uh, incomplete. But it's just a matter of trying to specify its parameters. So for so first we need to open this Cape Open object editor. Uh, we can just put the rename unit as distillation. Distillation column. Okay. And the these these other uh, parameters can be further edited down the road. So you'll see what I mean later when the specified um, window opens, it might take a while. Here you go. So this is the interface of the ChemSep. So what you need to do is to uncheck Cape Open properties since our thermodynamics is NRTL and when we use Cape, Cape Open, they have their own property packages. But to be very consistent with the problem, we'll just uncheck Cape Open properties so that we can specify our own property package, which is NRTL. So, and we'll need to expose energy ports in order for the energy streams to be connected into the diagram itself. And we'll go next. Title, nothing. Components, don't need to change anything here. Operation, so it's an equilibrium column. Simple distillation. Total liquid product for the condenser. Total condenser, partial reboiler. Number of stages. So this is where it gets tricky. And how do we know, how do we check how do you make the problem from the shortcut column as very, very 
similar to the uh, chemsep column. So that's the reason why I also took note of the details of the shortcut column so that it would actually help make sense on what the calculation between the chemsep column and the shortcut column actually gave us. So using the details from the shortcut column, the actual stage is actually 24. So put here 24. And what's the feed stage? So adapt to the stream. The feed stage from the shortcut column is 12 at the 12th stage. So put here tw stage 12. So that's that's good. Then afterwards, we will now go to properties. So this is where it gets interesting because the reason why I said earlier that the Cape Open property should be unchecked is because we will properties are NRTL and Cape Open properties have its own specific and unique property package. So the K value, we will use the Kima, which makes the equations of state ideal gas stock. The activity coefficient is NRTL as specified earlier. The vapor pressure will be Antoine equation and the enthalpy will be in ideal nature. Then go with thermodynamics, done, physical properties, nothing to change, reaction, nothing to change, feed, nothing to change, specifications, none, analysis, pressures. So the pressure is still 1 ATM or 11325 Newton per meter squared or Pascal, constant pressure, nothing to change here, nothing to change here, column specs, and the results, well, we'll just uh, solve the results here. So we'll save it, save problem to file, and close. Then we have this, as you can see here, now the energy has its own respective streams to be connected. So we need to connect the stream of the feed, connect for the outlet, oops. So we'll just delete this. So sorry about that. So the feed is connected already and the top product is the distillate. So we'll connect this material stream. And who apologies, this is supposed to be bottoms. I just noticed. There you go. The top part, top product is supposed to be distillate. Okay, then for the bottoms part, it's need to connect it. Here you go, and we'll just delete this. So the top product is st stuck at number seven. I'll just change it. Sorry about that. Are changing but it's it's fine we can just rename it since we didn't we did not change a specific detail of the outlet stream just rename it we can just say this this is the distillate the new distillate stream so you will encounter errors using cam cape open if one is not uh, familiar with the interface it's normal it's just a bit of practice what's needed afterwards double check the feed stream is connected the outlet distillate, the outlet bottoms, and here the energy. We can connect condenser heat duty to condenser duty, and the boiler heat duty. And the boiler heat duty to reboiler duty. And as you can see, and let us solve it as follows. And that is the result. So the condenser duty calculated is 1620.26 kilowatts and the reboiler duty is negative value. So you might be wondering why is it a negative value? However, in for the shortcut columns a positive value. Well stay calm. That's because the arrow here is pointing away from the column. So this is a trick to know for the WSIM when the energy stream goes away from the from the system means it is exothermic or it releases heat. However, if the value is negative but the arrow is going away, that means the, the energy is going in the system. 
So the reason it makes sense is because when this when the energy stream is going out away from the system, but it is negative, that means energy is going into the system, and that makes sense because you need heat for the reboiler so that the liquid from the bottoms would be able to vaporize again in order to have the reflux initiated from the, to the tank. So that is the condenser duty and the reboiler duty. Then, to know the other needed details such as the minimum stage and the reflux ratio, we go back to the column, since this is already solved, we go back again to the column and the editor and search here at the results tab. There's an additional tab, as you noticed earlier. There's not, this tab is, is, does not exist earlier, but after solving the flow sheet, this is now here. This is called the FUG or respons responsive to the Fink's underwood Gilliland analysis or the shortcut equations, which can which was uh, helps us find a shortcut analysis on the number of stages, reflux ratio, and optimal feed stage. So from this one, and older specifying that our recovery of light key, which is ethanol, is 0 0.99, and the recovery of heavy key is 0 0.99 as well. To double check from the problem, the distillate recovery is 0 0.99 in fraction, and then the recovery distillate recovery in the bottom 0 0.01. So here must be 0 .0, 0 0.99 and the recovery of heavy key is 0 0.99 as well since 1 minus 0 0.01. Then the reflux ratio is 1.5 times the minimum and the relative volatility is geometric average. Then we, get, we are able to find that the number of stages actual is 20.94597 or 21. From the Gilliland equation, the reflux ratio is 2.362648, the feed stage is at the 10th stage, and the minimum stages is 11.46683. So, going back, the actual stage we set is 12, and the minimum stage is 11.46683, as you can see here. For the feed stage, it's 11.64053 for the feed stage, but according to here it's at the 10 stage ideally however in the chemsep we specified it as the feed stage as the 12 stage in order for again for the shortcut column and the chemsep column to be at least similar in parameters since essentially the input of the chemsep column requires data of the stages and how we would not be able to acquire this set data without the use of the shortcut column being solved first so for now, I just specified that the feed stage is 12 since this is what we used in initially to input it. Then the actual reflux ratio is 1.5 times the minimum. The minimum reflux ratio is 1.575098 and multiplying it, we get a reflux ratio of 2.362648. I'm sorry. 1.575098 and 2.362648. 263648 and this is the summary of data from the chemset column the comparison so how do we compare these two data well first we need to know the difference between the two values not only from the required values but also the extra detailed values that was specified earlier to to correct myself this is now 2.263648 and this is supposed to be 2.263648 and doing a short calculation using my calculator to correct myself. So let's do a uh, percent uh, analysis, percent difference analysis to this equation over 2 times 100. So the percent difference in the actual reflux ratio is actually at 24, 24.5804 or 58. Okay, sorry, I, I corrected myself. And essentially, how do I, so the reason why I have a comparison slide here, it's because we want to compare the values between the uh, shortcut column and the chemsep column to see how are they very, very similar. So. I compared the shortcut column details and the chemsep column details. So the actual stages in its pure decimal form 
has a difference of 3.65. The minimum stages is 14.20% difference. Optimal fascia is 0 0.80. Actual reflex ratio, 24% difference. Minimum reflex ratio, 20% difference. Condenser duty, 26.04% difference. And reboiler duty, 29.99% difference. So, the reason why the actual stages and the optimal stage have a very, very low percent difference is it's because in the chemsec column, again, I use the data from the shortcut column so that the simulation could occur. However, for the rest of the data, it is their own individual values. And as you can see here, the percent difference is actually quite high. So the reason because a possible reason as to why such a large percent difference is seen is due to the shortcut method relying solely on the fence Underwood and Gilliland analysis shortcut equations, while the CAMSEP also uses graphical method methods in conjunction with the Fenske, Underwood, and Gilliland analysis methods. Additionally, both provide a good estimate only. Also, the thermodynamic property of NRTL could also be a source of variation calculations. So, I personally don't know if the NRTL in the CAMSEP specified is different from the NRTL in the uh, specified on the DWSIM itself. However, in the case, in this case, that there is the, the reason for such a large percent difference might be that a, a difference in change in values in, in change in method, since one uses the shortcut and the other uses both the shortcut and the graphical. And another source of difference might be on the use of actual values. Since because what I included here in the actual stages is actually a 24 stage actual value, not the decimal, since the simulator in CAMSEP does do not accept decimal related values, only actual related values. Hence, might, that might be a good source of variation on why or reason on why is there such a large percent difference. But overall, both simulators, both simulation procedures provide a good estimate and seeing that they are almost similar to one another, regardless of its percent difference, I can conclude that they are reliable in nature. That is all. Thank you.